I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 1st of July, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today I'm starting the video while driving the car because it's been a rainy day. I had no time to go out before it started like really seriously raining. And now I have a lot of errands that I have to run. And so this is my chance to get the vlog going. I'm actually recording this on day of, which I don't do very often. So it's nice to get a chance to have at least some hope of catching up and I am on my way out to do some banking, do a bunch of errands now that I'm in between rainstorms. And as soon as I'm done with those, we're gonna be heading to the Residencia de Fatima, not the, not the Reparto Fatima, but the Residencia Fatima, where we're gonna be looking at another house in that region, uh, our first one in the Residencia in quite some time. And we're gonna bring that to you and uh, our updates for the day. So we're gonna get to all that right after the bump. bit on my shorts this week about how hard it is to actually go out and get uh, videos and photos, just information in general on properties. Okay, I'm doing the thing. A truck has broken down in the road and instead of moving it, they just left it in the dead center of the lane and making everyone drive around them like they could push that off the road. So uh, it, it's very difficult. I did a couple shorts that you guys probably have already seen if you're watching all my videos and you know that, that going to see properties is extremely hard here. And I wanna talk about that a little bit because we go see a lot of these houses and I tell you guys about them, but you're missing some of the, the color on this. And that is that we put in a lot of time, Marcella specifically puts in a ton of time trying to get people to be willing to show us homes or let us see homes so that we can bring them to you. This is not like the United States where we simply go, hey, we'd like to look at a house and they go, great, we'd love to show you a house because we wanna sell it. What actually happens is we say, we heard you want to sell this house, please, please, please let us find out about it and tell people about it. And they pretty routinely say, no, we really, we really don't feel like showing it. That seems like a lot of effort. Or we don't like people seeing the house. We'd rather if you only decided to rent it without seeing it. Or we don't want it recorded. We only want people who can show up in person to decide on it. These kinds of things are really common. And for whatever reason, people really dislike. I'm driving through a detour zone right at the moment. There's so much work going on in Tutiava. I'm constantly, for the last month or so, driving through this non-stop construction zone. It is taking so much of my time every day dealing with this, but we're getting a lot of upgraded services in the area, so I can't really complain, but boy, does it make running simple errands into the city, like going to do the banking, difficult. And I, you guys can't see it because the, the, the windows are, are so uh, blacked out on this car that you can't see anything outside the car, but it's just a line of traffic over there. So, so there's this, this cultural thing where even though people say they want to sell or rent a house, that they advertise it and they put up a sign and all that, there's a really high chance that either all of the people involved haven't agreed and they just put up the sign to placate someone. Yes, they placarded to placate, uh, or, um, there, there's some disagreement after the fact or somebody involved doesn't want to deal with it because they're not the one who gets the money or whatever. And so you end up with a situation where they, you find out about houses that are in theory available. And then when you actually go to get information on, on them, you find out that they're not really looking to rent them or whatever. And there's a lot, there's so many reasons that this can happen because of the weird way that things happen here. And most importantly, there are very loose or traditionally have been very loose real estate laws in the country. And so the the requirements for advertising, the requirements for claiming that you're the agent of a house are extremely low. And so there's both people just trying to gather information or uh, uh, trying to, to give an impression. And since in general, no one is looking at houses, house sales and rentals and all that is extremely, extremely low. Um, someone just parked in the road again. Uh, uh, people often feel safe that they can advertise a property and they don't have to worry about anyone actually coming to look at it. But if you're someone like us and you have a show like this, if we put a house on the show, there's a really high chance 
especially if it's a nice house at a, at a reasonable price, that someone is going to be very interested in it. And so because of that, our show actually for people who are claiming they want to sell a house or to rent a house uh, actually presents a problem because we tend to take houses that would otherwise go unnoticed and put them very squarely on the map and create uh, interest in them. And then it uncovers the fact that often people were hoping to fly under the radar. That's why they just put a little sign out on, the, on a fence, right? On a back street. No one will ever find it. No one will ever call. If someone does call, they'll never coordinate with someone else to find out that everyone who calls is being turned down. No one will ever figure out what's going on. It's easy to hide. It's kind of like job listings on Indeed or whatever. 99% of them, that's an overstatement, but the majority of them are fake, right? They're just there because a company wants to appear here like it's hiring or they want to find out how much it would cost to get someone if they did decide to hire or they want to get someone on the on the line so if they decide they want to hire in the future they've got someone ready whatever there's a million reasons why you might put up a fake job posting uh, but it's so common that it's almost assumed that a job posting you see will be fake on any of those sites that's how it works in Nicaragua. If you see a house listed for rent or sale and, and you haven't actually spoken to the owner, there's a really high chance that it's not really for sale. It's just they're finding out or they're trying to keep someone happy. Then there's the other side. That's the house owner side. On the other side, we have agents who are not required to actually have a contract on a house. They can say pretty much anything they want. They can do pretty much anything they want. That is changing. There's a new law, but right now we're still under the old one uh, as far as what's in effect. And it, you can just go out and claim to represent a house. And this is happening a lot. You get a hold of an agent. And then when it comes time to actually show the house, then they either have to figure out how to get you into the house and show it, even though they're not an official agent for it, or they have to then decline showing you the house. And we get that all the time. So those two problems go on continuously. People are faking that they're the agents for the house, or they're faking that they're attempting to sell the house and leaving you in a situation where you can you can make quite a bit of an effort uh, and, and even show up to a house. We've had multiple times where we've shown up to the house and while we're there waiting at the door at an appointed time, they'll say, oh, they were hoping we weren't gonna show up. And then they're like, yeah, no, we're not gonna show the house. And we're like, you made a schedule. We appeared at the place you said you wanted to sell at the time you wanted to show it to us. And now you're not showing up. You forgot that we were like, it's really rough, really, really rough. Then there's also problems with just the ways, the way the agents work, even when everything comes together, there's still a lot of problems. So another problem with agents is that many of them, the majority of them have no idea how to actually show a house. So partially this is an Americanism versus a Nicaraguanism. In Nicaragua, when we show a house, it is as is. If it's a mess, it's a mess. If it's dirty, it's dirty. If it's cluttered, it's cluttered. You put no effort into showing a house. If you want it, you'll take it. If you don't, you won't. And that's just how people treat it. There's no effort put in to make you actually want the house beyond telling you about it and then negotiating the price afterwards. That's the entire process. The idea that you would go out of your way to stage a house, clean a house, paint a house, prepare it in any way to sell is foreign. It simply won't happen. I have never once seen a house where any effort whatsoever was put into making the house desirable at the time of viewing. In America, you're used to things not just being staged, but you may go cook some pie in the oven or throw something in to make it smell like home. They'll do anything they can to make it feel desirable to be in the house because they know that's how you get a sale. That's how you make it more reliable that someone's going to take the house and that they'll pay more for it. And here that simply doesn't happen. It's a people really pretty broadly have a, I could care less if you take my house kind of attitude. And it really reflects in the slow house sales uh, and the overall industry's lack of interest in doing anything. So that's the first piece, this, the people who are pushing the house put no effort into making it a more desirable situation. And you can reasonably come up with why historically this would be the case. People traditionally would only take houses in their neighborhood. There'd only be one available. If they could afford it, they would take it. And if they couldn't, they wouldn't. And that would be about the entire picture. But now there's a real estate market and people looking from other places and entire things missing. It's a big problem. The other 
is the technical issues. If you're in America, for example, you would always have the address of a house before you went to look at it. In fact, location, 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 you wouldn't be willing to look at a house until you knew its location. Why bother? Because its location will be a major factor in determining if you want it or not, and you can decide on that aspect of the house long before you ever go there to actually look at it. So that is something that's missing here, partially because there's this culture of not having addresses and refusing to speak in definite terms about locations that carries over into housing. So we had uh, two situations arise. One, which I'm going to be readdressing today in just a little bit with you guys. Hopefully it all goes well. I have to run back to uh, the Reparto, well, the Residencia Fatima, and look at the house that I mentioned. This is the same house that we went out to see yesterday on the 30th, but when we got there, it turned out that while the real estate agent, who was very nice and friendly, knew exactly what we were doing, was very appreciative of us filming and everything, he showed up and was waiting for us, but because he's not an official agent of the house, he doesn't have keys, he has no way to stage clean any of those things, and that's another part of this. One of the reasons those things are not done is because the agents aren't very normally official. They're just people who are showing houses. They don't actually represent the house necessarily. And so they don't have keys. They don't have any any way to put in that effort. And if they did, another agent would come along and sell the house from under them and they would have none of the benefits of the work and potential money that they put in. So because there's no system that guarantees that the agent who puts in the work on a house is the one who gets the commission, no one is on the same page working together. Everyone is adversarial, and uh, the owners pretty much are uh, car uh, 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 laissez-faire. They're, they're hands off on the house, and the agents are in a position where they will show it to you, but they can't do anything to make the individual house more attractive. They just, it, financially, it's, it's impossible for them. So we went and the owner refused to show up with the keys. They forgot the time, didn't agree to the time, I don't know, but they didn't come with the keys. But they're supposed to be coming with the keys today. So I've got to run back again and do that, making this house showing have more than an hour of driving just to go see a house that should be more or less around the corner. The other problem is that agents don't understand technology at all and put no effort into it and could care less about making things easy for you. And so routinely with every house we go to see, we don't get an address, partially because there aren't any, or a really good like pin drop on a map or any way to identify the house. So even the one that I'm going to today in Residencia Fatima, of course I've already been there, so this one I can get back to, but when we first went there, we drove into the Residencia, went to the, the roundabout, met the agent on the roundabout, he walked up to the house and we followed him. Most of these places, we get to where they tell us to go. Oh, go two blocks north of this landmark, and then wait until we find you, then they tell us more details on how to get to the house and we narrow it down and work our way there. And it's a real problem because you are constantly, um, I just got redirected down a very odd uh, detour, that's okay. And uh, you're constantly in a position of going to a house that you don't know where it is until the very, very, very last second. And quite often the agent isn't clear where it is at the time that you get there. Because they're not official, they're guessing the same as you in many cases and don't put any work into it ahead of time. And, and routinely I've been saying, hey, you know we need to be able to find this house, we need to be able to identify it, we need some way to, to actually have a discussion and to drive to it. Send us the, the, everyone's on WhatsApp. Every bit of communication for all these things is done on WhatsApp. It's how life is done here. There's a button, send my location. Just go to the house and send me the location. If you haven't stored it ahead of time, which tells me you've never been to the house, because what, as an agent, would you do first when you got somewhere? Well, I'd, I'd figure out where it is on a map so that I can talk to my other agents in my agency about it. But you gotta have the map for everything. So I'm very convinced that in most cases, I'm with agents who have never seen these houses before. They're seeing them for the first time the same as us. And, uh, but when they then get there on the day that they're doing a showing, they won't send us an address. And even when you ask for it, when you get close, when you arrive, often they don't answer their phones. They're busy doing something else or they're off relaxing. They haven't arrived yet, which is fine if they're late. If they're, you know, that's, people are late to things. I've been late to showings, that's fine. But when you're there and you're all waiting, that they're withholding the address 
to make sure you can't drive to the house is a major problem. It causes all kinds of delays and nearly every house I've gone to, and I always go with Nicaraguans. This is not me as a gringo, not understanding directions from Nicaraguans. This is with Nicaraguans, with me, Nicaraguans giving directions to other Nicaraguans. They have no ability to tell each other where the houses are and we're constantly driving around often the agent is driving around because the homeowner refused to give them an, an a definite address and they're guessing which house they're going into it is an absolute mess for everybody and none of this has to do with the fact that i'm foreign if i send someone out who's nicaraguan and it's 100 percent nicaraguans doing it the same problem arises the only difference is they're expecting everyone to be incompetent and I have some expectation of like, well, you know, you can just send an address. And I've been training Marcella on this every time. I'm like, just tell them to send an address. And now I'm like, tell them we're not leaving the house until they send an address because I don't trust them. We get there and they're not ready. They haven't found the house yet. They don't know what house we're going to go see. Uh, and that happened just the other day. We got there, drove around, couldn't find the guy. He had not sent the address. We were running late. He had so much time to go find the house, send the address, 30, 40 minutes, right? Cause we had talked to him, he knew we were running late. He was there, supposedly. All he had to do was show up, send the address, and we would have driven straight there and quickly seen the house, been very efficient, would have been great. He refused to send the address. By the time we got there, he stopped uh, communications because just it seems to always happen. We never were able to find the house or him, showed up to the place he said he wasn't there, drove around, didn't find him, had no idea what house to look at, had no contact from him. And so what are we supposed to do? Just pull over and wait in the middle of nowhere for nothing? No, we started driving back to the office. And we're nearly back and eventually just sent an address, uh, sent a message saying, we're no longer interested. If you don't have a house to show us, why are we, why are we wasting our time? That was the end of it. To the best of my knowledge, he didn't have a house to show us. He was just hoping he'd find one in the area before we got there and failed to do so, so didn't show up. These are real problems that we deal with when we go look at, look at houses all the time. The number of times we're partway to a house or just about to leave to go look at a house and they cancel at that moment and say, ah, you know, we, we decided we don't want to show you the house. I don't know how many of those times they actually didn't have a house to show and we're hoping to find one before we got there versus because they don't send enough information to verify whether you're at the house they were originally speaking of in most cases. It's so general that they just have to find a house within a few blocks in any direction and show you that by the time you've arrived. It's a gamble that they can play to try to get you out looking at houses with them when they may not have had anything to show you initially. All right, we're walking into the house here. We're going right into the living room. This is a very small house, remember. We've got the living space here, both dining and living room, the sala right here and a small kitchen. It's pleasant, it's well appointed, but it is small, very, very small. This is not a place where you live if you're planning on cooking at home. Like the Residencia of Fatima is just not that kind of community. Small backyard, this is mostly about airflow, not about, you know, throwing parties in the backyard. You can put a little table out there. You can do a little bit of gardening, but it's very limited. There is this secret utility space hidden around the back corner. That's a great little touch. Keep all of that away, but you do have to walk through the yard. I would want to put through like a stone path or something, make that a little bit more uh, accessible, not going through the grass all the time because it does rain a bit, but you know, that's how it is. Now, this is a three bedroom. All the bedrooms are on the one side. Living public space is on the other. We're going to start at the smallest room here. But first we have this open air. This is how we get cooling through this style of house. This is a front to back. The sides are, this is an, a semi attached. So both sides are against other houses. So the windows of the inside rooms come into these airways. And then we have a very small bedroom here. Really, this is what I would consider an office. Like it, it is technically a bedroom. Certainly it'll work as a bedroom, but it'll work much better as an office for sure. We got a little bit shaky there. Front bedroom and the main bathroom here. This is the house bathroom. This is shared by those two front rooms. This bedroom, it's got the window directly outside, a little bit bigger. It's definitely the nicer bedroom. This is what I would consider the second bedroom. Uh, but with that open air space, you're going to get a lot of air coming through. And if, if you leave the doors open and all those windows open, you'll really get some air through. We have another open air uh, way here with another window to the master. So having two of these, that's a big deal. Typically, you only see that in much larger houses. The master bedroom here, again, not large, but 
definitely larger than the other bedrooms. Has its own bath here as well. Quite small. Everything in this unit, everything in the residencia, very small. This is meant to be a place where you sleep, watch a little bit of TV. It's not really meant for entertaining. It's not an extensive property. It's not really meant to be, but you do have a good number of windows front and back with those that open air to the top. You do get a lot of cooling power through the house. You'll notice that side of the street, we're looking at the house, the one in white there, uh, is this whole side of the street is identical units. That blue one there with the sign out front, also available for rent. Uh, but all of these, three bedroom, two bath, same layout. I've been in a few of them. I've asked, everyone says that they're the same. We are gonna take time to do a walkthrough of this community right now. So this is the Residencia, not the Reparto Fatima. This is north of the Reparto. This is a gated community. So uh, at night, they close the gate. You have to have access through a security guard to come in. That means you have to have called ahead. Someone has to know you're coming. They have to approve you. You get escorted to the house. There's a lot, lot of security in this community. It's really for people who are just super concerned, uh, especially a lot of single women really like this community just to give them that extra feel of security. Most people who are living with multiple people in their family, they're going to typically live in the Reparto, which is outside the gate. The security is really good still. This is not a dangerous area by any stretch. Nicaragua is not a dangerous country. Leon is not a dangerous city within Nicaragua. The Reparto Fatima is a very safe Reparto within the city of Leon. The Residencia just takes it to the extreme where you have that full-time guard uh, inside a very, very safe area area beautiful house there love those arches this is much larger than any other house that i noticed in the residencia and it and the one across the street which is not as big but is a bit bigger than the average both come up against this outside wall which has kind of an, a dirt access road running along the side i believe somewhere over here and it might be this dirt road used to be the railroad and obviously parts of it are gone that was the guard house that flashed by so there's a few of these. We're going to see another one down on the rotunda uh, at every entrance, even ones that don't open. They have guard stations. So you can have guards actively out of the rain because that's a big deal here um, uh, watching over the streets. So so if all the stations are manned, basically there's, there's no real large space within uh, the complex that can't be seen by a guard and certainly a guard could get to any particular place at a moment's notice. So this is uh, from a security standpoint, you're, you're going to really struggle to find a complex more secure feeling than this. This is going to give you just an extreme degree um, of, of confidence in where you live. You should feel that most anywhere in Nicaragua, but if you really want to just have that absolute peace of mind, this is a, a fantastic option. You also have a lot of houses uh, with, with nice yards, uh, well manicured, everything going on. It, it's a really beautiful area, but keep in mind, if you're looking in the Residencia, the houses are going to be small. There are some that are larger, none are large, right? And the flies, I haven't noticed this in the past, the flies on this particular day, really bad. Not mosquitoes, nothing you have to worry about, they're just flies, but they are everywhere in the video. You're gonna see them throughout this walk. I really like this spot on the corner, just really nice trees, really nice bushes, um, and and one of the, the larger houses. All of the corner spaces tend to be a little bit larger. Also worth noting, there's essentially no building lots available in all of the Residencia. This is full. I think there is one or two, but it's essentially full. I'm going to show at least one that I believe is available, but I, even there I'm guessing. Uh, you can see there. one of the things I do like about this Residencia is that there is some variety. It is not uh, the same one or two houses repeated over and over again. On that first street, obviously, those are exact copies going basically the entire street. But on the other streets, you really do get some customization. You can see like long driveways. Some of them have garages, all kinds of different things. Some culverts there going in for construction. And I believe where they're sitting is an open available lot. Not positive, but I think that uh, you could put a new construction on that particular corner. It looks pretty decently large, and it, it's certainly big enough. 
um, but it is smaller than it seems. On the left here, it may seem from the video like those are building spots that have not been cleared yet. That is misleading. You can't really tell in the video, but there is a uh, an incline there that goes down very abruptly. You would not realistically be able to, I mean, you could build a house there, but you would not want to put a house there. That's where water flows. There is a drainage stream down below. Um, it, it's needed for drainage. So it's it, building there would be problematic and expensive and it just wouldn't make sense. So they are not building lots. That is just a greenway against that side of these houses, making this a much more quiet street than the others. This curve at the bottom with this rounded uh, gate and, and house here, um, I really like that spot. I tend to like places that are on curved uh, corners. We are coming into the rotunda. So I want to explain a little bit about the layout of the residencia here. So the residencia lies north of the reparto. And to enter it, you enter from the southern point. You approach a gate. That gate then goes onto a long, narrow road with houses on the left or west side as you travel north. The east side of that is simply a wall. The reparto is on the other side of the wall, uh, and that is off to our left here. We are going west towards the rotunda. That uh, entrance road with very few houses on it goes over a bridge, which we were, are going to show here in a second, and comes to this roundabout or rotunda. This rotunda is the center of the community and every road attaches to it. So we're about to look. That is the main gate right up there. And now we're facing west. This is the road that we initially looked at that line of houses on. So the house we looked at is just up around that corner. We're not going to walk back to it. We've already walked that area, but that's where it is. So we're, there's no getting lost here. It's a very small area. There is a little park down here. You can kind of see the stream there. The bridge is right here with these, these bushes along the road. They line a small bridge that goes over uh, the drainage. Not the drainage you see right there. It's a bigger thing. The one that goes up along those other houses. The gate's up there. There's the guardhouse I mentioned. You only see it for a second. This spot on the corner there. Nice big wall. Very private. I, I'm guessing that's quite a nice house attached to that. Uh, this center road, I feel like, is actually the best of the three roads. Uh, it has really nice sidewalks, the most mature trees. Um, I can only guess that this is where the houses went in first. I really like the pavers here. Uh, generally, this community is quite quiet. It's very attractive. The houses are not all uniform, but they are all well-maintained. You never see ones that are empty or abandoned. Um, there are generally a few available for rent. Uh, so that's kind of good that people are coming and going. Uh, but I never normally see one for sale. One for sale in the Reparto comes up uh, with some frequency. But here in the Residencia, they seem to only uh, commonly be available for rent. People who own these are not looking to get rid of them. Notice there is a small line of similar ones here. I've not been in, in any of those. I don't know how their layouts differ, but they are two stories. We're on a bit of an incline here. Uh, so most of these houses are two stories, but not all. And uh, we're just going to go a little ways up um, and then we're going to pause the video and hop a little bit higher on this middle road. But you can see the end of it there. Like we're, we're not going very far. So we got some beautiful palm trees here, and we're now looking down the road. That was a little bit abrupt, not a good cut. There's the truck we were just at. Here's the white truck we were just approaching. So we just moved a few feet. I just had to do a quick camera change there and didn't get good continuity. We're coming up to the upper road, and the upper road is kind of like, it's kind of like a circle that goes around. It connects to the west side of the rotunda, does a loop, and then comes back into the east side of the rotunda. And then the road we just came up simply cuts through the middle of that circle. And that's it. That's the entire thing. Um, so it's almost like a balloon. So we're heading back towards where we first came up, just showing a few more steps. So that is our quick walking tour, although we showed essentially every inch of the Residencia. Fatima, I hope you enjoyed that and found it educational. And with that, we're going to wrap up a little bit of the walking tour of the Residencia of Fatima. In future episodes, we are going to uh, be able to come back and look at more houses here. While I was out doing this, I actually uh, found out there's another uh, house. First of all, you saw it on the video. There's one directly next door, two houses, uh, two doors down. Um, that is uh, essentially exactly the same, 
also available for rent currently. And there's one across the street, which is larger, a little bit different design, also a three bedroom, two bath, a little bit more expensive, but quite a bit larger that we've been invited to come film in the near future. So I hope to be back really soon to take a look at that. I'm not sure what day we're gonna get to it, but we're gonna do our best to bring that potentially this week so you can see what a little bit larger space in the residency at Fatima would look like. I love this neighborhood. I'm glad I got to walk around. It's not very large, but it does give you a really good feel of what's there. I basically showed everything on this video from a, uh, from a walking perspective. It's a pretty neat spot. So thank you for joining me. If you'd like to sponsor the channel, right up above, you can leave me, uh, leave me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me and helps me cover the cost of doing all this stuff, the time and everything. Remember, we are not real estate agents. We do not get paid in any way for showing these houses. We are simply going out and bringing these to you guys. If you guys hire us to show these houses, of course, that's different. But in general, we're just, if we're putting them on the show, that means we're just putting them on the show. We're filming just to help get the word out about things. And of course, we enjoy seeing houses. You guys enjoy, enjoy viewing them and it helps get our viewership up that's beneficial but we are not paid in any way to promote these houses and if you contact us we're just going to get you in contact with whoever is the seller and and they're going to make their commission or whatever not us so if you want to help support our work just buy us a coffee if you are looking for direct assistance and would like to hire my team to help out with anything you can shoot us an email info at relocate nicaragua.com we'd love to talk to you whether it's just a, a consultation on the phone or actually sending a team out to look for things or setting up your house doing some shopping whatever it is you need we handle all of that stuff, including uh, all of the, the legal paperwork and, and all that sort of stuff. So uh, those are all things that are options. We'll have a website up soon. It's not up quite yet. I do have to mention, it was my walking around in Fatima today, and uh, I was trying to be discreet. That's why the camera angle is kind of low. I said that. Um, but it occurred to me if I had a much, much smaller, more discreet uh, camera, I could get a lot of these things in spots where people may not want us to be filming, but only say something because we're walking around with a big camera, which is why I don't talk while I'm filming, because I don't want to draw attention to it. Well, it occurred to me that the new Insta360 GO 3 would be absolutely perfect for some of these discreet neighborhood walkarounds. And so I placed the order the same day that I recorded this. I mentioned it several days ago on the show because I record these out of order, but it was actually walking around today on the second that I said uh, if I had the go three this would be perfect I'd be able to get so many more shots so many more things like this we're getting it so I placed the order I should have it on the night of the 10th thanks for joining me like and subscribe tell your friends post on social media and I will see all of you tomorrow <laughs>